Hello guys, this is Vaish. So the UPSC prelims 2024 uh, revision series, so which we call like 1000 topics to uh, prepare for UPSC uh, 2024. 2025 students also can watch. So this is part 1, but this is not the first episode. We did a part 0 before this, where I explained you a certain topics, like I'll show you in screen. Uh, we made an Excel sheet actually, where we uh, are like listing down like polity, defense, space, science, uh, geography, history, like that. In this area, so what are uh, topics were hot topics in the last 2 years in news? Based on that, we have made it and this is all there in the test series PDF, which is enrolled by our students. Okay. So, if you have not enrolled, even now it is open, you can come and enroll current affairs alone or history alone, economics alone, like that subject wise PDFs also we are giving. And this will be in the question answer format already and not like other uh, institutes magazine format. Okay. Because magazine will be very lengthy and it will be like one topic is given, you have no idea what will come in the prelims paper, but we are converting that into a question itself. So, question, solution explanation news link if any okay that also will be there so this model has helped many students clear prelims every year so if you are also serious you can enroll to this and a part of that as a free initiative we are doing a lot of samples here with detailed fashion so that it helps the revision of students who are enrolled also and those who are not enrolled also so uh, last week's episode you have to see uh, three three days back only i did it after that you will understand like what is the less priority items what is the high priority item this is all in part zero i've explained that which you should uh, do it or you should, should skip it and uh, this is has to this has to be taken seriously okay this is not like simply made whatever is written has to be followed in part zero and now part one we will see the continuity of that okay we will see questions okay and again 2025 students as i told you can watch this but for you also a full length uh, timetable starting on 450 uh, days basis is on march one is the date march one it will start and it will go till next may okay next may when your prelims is there so it is uh, one year plus okay 450 days so that again is there and there is a crazy emi offer going on this is all i'm telling in the starting so that when i start mcqs the continuity doesn't go okay so uh, 1250 starting okay that is for the prelims pack which we usually don't give nine month installment this also will be uh, given uh, as part of a crazy offer which which we call emi offer so 1250 per month or it's 1500 per month for second pack or 3250 per month for the uh, fourth pack like there are four five packs okay so if you want the details come and whatsapp me i'll give you the video link where we explained like one hour launch video is there where the packs are there but the fee there will be not in the EMI format. For EMI, you can contact me directly after deciding like, okay, I want pack one or pack four. Come and WhatsApp me. Then I'll tell you which pack has what EMI. Okay. And again, according to students' convenience, we are again making uh, changes in that. Okay. Some people want some uh, little change in the value or maybe the month's extension. Everything can be done. Okay. So, very serious aspirants alone contact the timetable starting on uh, March 1. You can see 450 days are there. 306 days this year and 144 days the uh, next year. So, total 450 days. Okay. And then hoodies and bags. This also you would be seeing unboxing videos. Okay. Right now, like I am also wearing one black one. So, this is being given free of cost to all these people who are enrolled to our test series. Okay. Very soon, we will start it for every student, meaning every student who has bought any pack. Let it be a small current affair pack also. Even for them, we will start it. As of now, it is given to the complete students, meaning the prelims plus means complete enrolled students. Okay. So, this will be given. We'll, there will be no extra enrollment or charges or sale and all so those students if asking like can i purchase this that is not available it is actually given as a token of gift for those people who believed in our model okay so whatever pdf you buy based on that we will be shipping maybe it's a hoodie maybe it's a bag or maybe it can be a, a notebook okay this is all we have collaborated with the biggest companies also wildcraft bags or classmate notebooks so it will be very high quality things so these things are uh, going on so if you uh, did not see it check out instagram many many unboxing videos done by our students and teachers and influencers many videos are there so you can go and uh, see that okay so the very first topic as i told we will do thousand topics today's first topic is uh, epic okay so epic is like a very favorite topic of upsc also 2009 it came i think question 2015 it came and now 2024 it is expected okay as per the uh, trend which is going on so three statements i have put in upsc's latest format i have put the uh, statements and uh, uh, things okay so you can see that uh, first statement epic sorry india is not a full-time member of asia uh, pacific economic cooperation or epic and second statement is some EPEC members did not like India to be part of EPEC. Okay. Third statement is EPEC had stopped taking new members in the 1990s. Okay. 90s means 92, 93, 94, anything up to 1999. One those years, those timeline, EPEC itself stopped taking new members. So, three statements are given. And the options are UPSC's latest format. Okay. Statement 1 and 3 are true and statement 2 is false. Statement 1 and 2 are true. Statement 3 is false. Then statement 1, 2, 3 are true. Statement 2 alone justifies statement 1, meaning the second statement is the reason why we are telling statement 1 is true. Then third uh, or fourth option is statement 1, 2, 3 are true, 
statement 2 and 3 okay both of them justify statement 1 meaning both are the reasons that india is not a member okay so you have to think in this aspect this level of detailing is being asked in questions that upsc is making you think on a question for a longer time okay usually when you see a question in like uh, 30 seconds you try to solve it this will take at least one and a half minute to two minute or even more than that because you have to read it two three times then check which say statement is like true or false because it's not one true or one false it's a combination of true false true false in one statement itself so it's like not looking four options it's looking like 12 options okay that is what the change upsc have done so many people who tell upsc syllabus change upsc pattern change everything is same only the way they ask the same topic has changed okay i'll show you how upsc used to ask the previous years okay like 2009 and 2015 same epic topic was asked like this okay where one 2009 question is a simply gk question they are asking the uh, headquarters of different different bodies like Asian Development Bank, uh, Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation and uh, ASEAN. Okay, that is Association of Southeast Asian Nations. So, these three in that also the answer only EPEC is correct there. Okay, Singapore is the headquarters. Okay, Asian Development Bank it is I think in Manila, Philippines and uh, the third one uh, ASEAN it will be in Indonesia. Okay, it will be Jar uh, Jakarta. Okay, so here answer will be for the second question that is UPSC 2009 question it is uh, uh, two only. Okay, option B. And the other one, if you see 2015 question, India is a member of which of the following? Okay, so EPEC is given, ASEAN is given, East Asia Summit is given. So ASEAN is like the name itself is Southeast Asian. India is not Southeast Asia. India is uh, this one. Okay, India is South Asia. So uh, two will go away. Then uh, uh, EPEC, I told you, EPEC, India is not a member. Okay, and the name is Asia Pacific. Okay, meaning the uh, it's not an Asian country. It's the one having border with the Pacific Ocean, which India actually don't have. And then East Asia Summit that actually India is a member because East Asia Summit is nothing but the ASEAN countries, 10 countries plus some extra countries. Okay, there is the six, uh, five countries which are the uh, immediate like Australia, New Zealand and uh, Japan. Some, uh, some countries are there. Okay, five countries. India was invited to that uh, plus five countries, but there they did not go. But plus seven is there where even Russia, USA and all enters. There India is there. So that is the East Asia Summit. If you don't know this, this also in Instagram and YouTube. Shortcut trick is there. How to remember SCO country, how to remember ASEAN countries. This is all I have done long back and it's free also. Okay, in YouTube shorts video section, go and check. I would have done it in single video itself. So here again, uh, the answer will be only East Asia Summit. So only three. Okay. So answer again for both is B only. Okay. So here, these are the type of questions UPSC asked and now they are asking this statement type or the complicated options type. But the intention is same. You have to know the basics about EPEC. Okay. But the way they ask is changed. So here, answer will be actually, um, I will show you the members first. Okay. Then you will understand or I will show you some theory also. So here, these are the members of EPEC. Okay. You can see Australia, Brunei, uh, Canada and Indonesia, Japan, all these countries and the year in which they have taken in. Okay, so the first everything is it's in order. So everything is like 1989. That is the time when they inducted everyone or they started the group. Okay, after that in the uh, early 90s, 91, 92, 93, 94 and all you see like they have some countries. Okay, and this is the time actually when they stopped taking members also. They themselves felt like we have got enough countries around 21 countries. Now we should work on their economies rather than taking in new. So they made a statement like 1993 to 1996, we will not take new members. That's why India when they applied also in 1991, it was rejected. Okay, India was not taken as a member. So, and after that 97, 98 time, they almost halted it fully because that time another thing happened, the Asian financial crisis. Okay, 2007 financial, sorry, 1997 financial crisis. So, after that, then they like strictly halted. Okay, and now anytime they can open it, they can take the members because that time they thought India was not ready uh, and we cannot take it. But India now is like part of everything. Okay, there is no one who don't want to work with India or take India in, within their uh, group. So there mostly India will join if they open up again. Okay, but as of now the status is it is halted. Okay, till 2012 they had halted officially. After that then nobody talked about it. So it's considered halted only. Okay, nobody uh, willingly told like okay, let's open members. So that is the status. I'll show you detailed explanation also. Don't worry about that. Uh, answer is uh, the last one. Statement 1, 2, 3 are true. And 2 and 3 both justifies the statement 1. That is, some of the EPEC members did not like India to be part of that. And EPEC had stopped taking new members in the 90s. Okay. So, all 3 are true and 2 and 3 justifies it. So, this is the level of question and thinking you have to do in the exam hall. And these are the notes. And this is all I am telling. My students already have the PDFs with them. Okay. Or maybe in the coming schedule you will get. I have picked up from various various tests to explain it to you today. So, this is the level of explanation and detailing you will get in any of my test. Okay. So very serious aspirants alone join because I don't like such people who buy this and then pile it up with other coaching materials. Okay. You should be fully believing in this model and ready to study this in the next three months. Then only buy it. Okay. Else don't buy and simply be a like a 
inactive member of ICIS. Okay, we don't appreciate such people. So here again, you can see India requested for membership. That time USA, Japan, Australia and all supported, but others did not support also. Officials decided uh, like not to take it for various reasons. One of the reason was the, uh, uh, this thing, uh, I told you the crisis, the economic crisis uh, which happened and also uh, some people did not like it. Okay, so now uh, if you see the red color highlighted whatever, that is sufficient to actually answer the statements which we gave remaining black is extra notes okay and if you see here they uh, have the secretary at singapore which was asked that's a question asked in 2009 so and then uh, 1989 it was established and then the extra ex facts okay 21 members and those member countries have given here in order and then taiwan and hong kong usually china has a control over them but here they act as independent economies itself okay and here instead of members they refer them as member economies because they are more concerned about the economic factor in this group whoever is part of this group it's about making their economies better that's why they call them as member economies rather than members uh, compared to other groups okay and it's one of the oldest groups when we take asia's side okay other all asian groups have come a little later and then uh, the uh, membership people, if you see, they are uh, approximately holding or accounting for 62 percentage of the world's GDP, 48 percentage of the uh, uh, world trade. Okay, I'll keep marking also so that uh, you will understand from where I am reading. Okay, so world trade in 2021, and then uh, here, goal is to support economic growth and prosperity and enhance regional economic integration, strengthen human uh, security and address common challenges such as climate change, health, this and all. So now, latest news, if, it, if you see, annually they'll have this summit. So leader summit happened in 2023. India is not a member, but India is an observer member since a uh, few years now. And that is why uh, they are uh, uh, invited. Okay, Indian uh, minister, commerce minister has uh, uh, participated there. And as an outcome of this year's thing, uh, there is a declaration, Golden Gate declaration about uh, creating a sustainable uh, future. Okay, for uh, all the member economies, that is the latest uh, thing happened. And they also endorsed this uh, EPEC action agenda on climate change and energy this also UPSC ask okay like this itself they'll give this action agenda on climate change and energy was seen in news related to which of the following body they'll give EPEC, Quad, SCO, ASEAN so usually a student won't know this because they don't take these summits and all seriously okay but last few years in prelims they are asking the uh, summit level uh, thing okay so we see India was invited uh, for the first time in November 2011 okay as a uh, this thing it's not first time now we have invited we have been invited as an observer member uh, since that time okay so this is the very first topic EPEC question and I hope now you understand what level uh, of teaching we are trying to do okay EPEC is the one of the most important topic I picked up today and we'll see more MCQ so the next topic if you see in current affair project double two double two zero okay two 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 zero seen in news relates to what okay so it is USA space mission Russia's nuclear powered project, India's supercomputing mission, Australia marine ecosystem. Okay, so different four different countries and four different uh, projects. Okay, so unless you have seen this, unless you have read the Hindu newspaper or you have done a current affair magazine or a good test series like Vaisha is, this will be a totally tough question for you. Okay, that is why uh, learning from the right source is very important. So here, you should know that this is Russia. Okay, so above Russia, we have water body and we will feel like okay russia has lot of access to the sea but problem is that area is the arctic circle and it's full of ice okay it's full of ice and so even though there are maybe minerals are there or you, you go you have to navigate through that it's very difficult so what you have to do that ice you have to break so ice breaking ships are there okay in russia china these people us everybody has ice breaker ships so this is very costly to build also so that ice breaker ship nuclear powered one Russia is building under this project 22220. Okay, they have many various projects, so they name it like numbers. Okay, project 16554, project 144, like there many projects are there. So, like that, now the latest is project 22220. In that, they are building uh, the ships. Okay, that is why this was repeatedly in news every time. Okay, because they are trying to uh, occupy that area. In Arctic, they are trying to get the access to the all the waters and all the sources there. So, here, their fourth icebreaker has been developed recently and it was in the news. And uh, it's built by them only in their uh, Baltic uh, shipyard and all. And uh, uh, see, the, this height weight and all is not important. Like what is the height of the ship, weight of the ship. That's just as an extra GK we have given you. But uh, for UPSC civil service exam, they won't ask you that level uh, detail. Okay. So here again, the names of the other ice breakers, which are already in service also is given here. Here, uh, Arctica, Sibir, Ural. Okay. And the fifth one is the Chukot. Ka, like this, it's all Russian terms. Okay, so this also UPSC sometimes makes it very difficult for students. Okay, like this Sibir, Ural, Arctica, this thing all is in news. 
uh, and what is it? So, you have to tell it is the same thing Russian nuclear powered ice breaker ships. Okay. So, this is the second topic and again little more uh, notes are there which you can pause and read if you see here older project names 10520, 10580. So, like there certain things are there. So, the North Sea is that sea which is there above Russia. So, North Sea is a geography point of view. You have to know that there is like extending to Kara Sea or anything if map based they ask you should know it is a around Russia or above that Siberia Russia area. Okay. So, that is a navigating route where they are trying to make the sea between uh, Barents Sea and Kara Sea and all. Bering Strait is there. Bering Strait is the area where our uh, longitude which uh, divides the date line also international date line passes through there okay it's between this usa russia if you take the world map like 3d you know uh, russia is ending and then that side usa will start between that there is a uh, like uh, sea okay that is this bering sea and bering strait and all so there uh, related geography you have to know okay upsc is asking geography latitude longitude questions also so you have to know little bit basics also it's not any ncrt is there it's not very difficult things this latitude longitude international standard date line green which meridian time all there in ncrt class 6 to 12th okay Geography, don't do any other textbooks. Only that is uh, NCRT is enough. Okay. And if you do a supporting test series like YCS, that will be sufficient for you. Don't read other textbooks for prelims. Okay. Now, the next topic or next question Muscat Ministerial Manifesto. Okay. MMM. So, these kind of keywords and all UPSC or SSC, these people like very much and they will ask you. So, this is in news related to what? Greenhouse gases, antimicrobial resistance, bonded labor, remittances. So, again, these four topics are very important as per UPSC syllabus. Okay, questions on climate change also comes, questions on this antibiotics also come, questions on labor and refugees and migrants comes and remittances which comes in the form of anything or FII, FDI, everything is very, very important. Okay. So, that is how we design options. The options will not be any random options which looks very awkward. It, it should be UPSC oriented only. So, here again, it is related to antimicrobial resistance. Okay. So, that may be many people do not know, but if you follow UPSC, you know, mains question also has come on this. That is when you have like we have fever and all, we immediately have dolo, we have this thing. So, we have that many tablets that these antibiotics or medicines we have that our resistance is going and the uh, uh, bacteria or virus what is there inside us they are now seeing this every now and then and they are used to it now they are like anti resistant they they, they they have no problem with these medicines now okay they have they have like we have survived like how like corona is coming and still we are not able we are not getting affected now our medicines are not getting affected on these virus and bacteria okay that thing is called antimicrobial resistance okay so uh, this thing happens every uh, year world antimicrobial awareness week happens in the month of november every year so that time uh, they uh, recently they had this manifesto musket ministerial manifesto uh, at the third global high level ministerial conference on this thing okay so anything we have like yoga we have a conference or climate change we have a conference like that for antimicrobial resistance also we have a conference okay so third one happened global level there this manifesto came out with the theme or theme like amr pandemic from policy to one health action okay so that is the news actually but you have to learn more things like how this uh, question also it occurs when bacteria virus fungi parasites no longer responds to the medicines okay antimicrobial medicines so in picture format if you see it looks something like this okay humans also consume uh, medicines or animals we inject lot of medicines and things and all so what will happen is they get it okay so inside them those bacteria virus and all consistently when they see these medicines they get like anti they are now resisting that and then that will go to the plant also plant system also or they will go from one human to another community or when you are in hospital there it will spread so like that it will go around and then the entire medicines will become ineffective that is the whole th uh, theory okay and that is why mains question also came so here the answer is antimicrobial resistance and uh, they have a lot of targets okay like meaning uh, the number of antimicrobials which is used in the agri food system that should be reduced by 30 to 50 percentage okay that is what in the in this manifesto it's written bringing an end to the use of medically important antimicrobial for growth promotion in animals and ensure the use of critical critically important antimicrobial okay this is not for mains if question comes you can write these points so, manifesto is aiming to revamp and effectively implement the national action plan for AMR. Okay, in India we have national action plan for everything. For climate also we have for uh, water, food, plastic, everything we have some plan. So, this is as part of the uh, AMR uh, plan. Okay, and then it calls upon a quadri-party organization, meaning the four bodies. Okay, FAO is there, UNEP is there, WHO is there and also this WOAH, that is the animal health body. All these people are uh, effectively coming together and working on uh, resisting this. Okay. So, here uh, this much would be enough for exam point of view because prelims they usually do not make complicated things on manifestos and summit. They will ask something straightforward only which has happened in the recent uh, current affair. Okay. So, this is the topic. Now, next topic 
the plastic life cycle was recently released by. Okay. So, plastic life cycle and see the options here. Central Pollution Control Board, last two years back to back UPSC is asking question on that. Okay. National Conservation Foundation, Niti Aayog and Center of Science and Environment. So, Center of Science and Environment you would have heard because I think the Down to Earth magazine, which is very good magazine for uh, environment, geography, science portions, uh, that is also published by uh, that body. Okay. So, here the report is the plastic life cycle was recently released by. Okay. And here answer will be Center for Science and Environment, the same uh, body which releases the uh, Down to Earth magazine. Okay. So, this is a think tank, a Delhi based think tank it is and uh, they have released this uh, during the conclave of India Habitat Center when conclave happened in November and there they are telling about this only. We are not having proper effective plans for uh, fighting the plastic uh, problem, Okay, plastic pollution. So, we already have plastic waste management rule 2016. It is again important because UPSC uh, last year or I think few years back, okay, 2015 or 16, I think they asked a question on the electric uh, uh, e-waste, okay, e-waste uh, management handling rules. If you see this one, in India, extended producer responsibility was introduced as an important feature in which of the following okay and they gave you this biomedical waste plastic uh, recycling thing e-waste and food safety so here answer is e-waste so uh, that e extended producer responsibility was very first time introduced in 2011 e-waste rule but it is now extended to plastic thing also okay the meaning is simple the producer's responsibility is extended meaning you are making something and selling to the market so when it is getting damaged also, it is your responsibility that you see that that product does not go into the nature and uh, destroy it, meaning collecting back the waste product also and then recycling and then again putting back in the market. So, that full cycle, okay, that is full producer's responsibility, okay, up to a level, up to a percentage, there will be certain exemptions and things and all, but up to a level, this thing was introduced. That is why UPSC asked like this itself, 2019 they asked and many students told it is a very tough question, how will we learn all these rules? This and all as and when it came in the news, you should have studied, okay, we all covered it, we all claimed this question also. When I did Vice versus UPSC video for that year, you can go and Google, okay, 2019 I think we claimed 55 questions or something, okay, which directly came from my test series. So, this was one of the questions that time. So, like this, they will again ask you uh, and uh, this today as this current affair, I am teaching you the plastic uh, report and plastic uh, this and all. Maybe this year they will feel like asking that and this uh, uh, rules also, it is not like one time they make and it is over. This government keeps on updating it, okay, based on the feedback and all. They keep on updating. See, 2016 they updated, 2018 they amended to add something, 21 they did something, 2022 they did something. So, every year they are amending something. See, extended producer responsibility and all is there as part of plastic rules also now. So, this thing, okay, this extra notes I am giving you so that in case a mains question come because UPSC will ask a 10 marker explain like how can we fight plastic uh, menace and uh, what is India doing currently for that. So, this rule like that itself you have to write ok. So, mains test series is separately is there but prelims magazines also will have lot of content which you can use there ok. So, this is the topic of plastic cycle and the other related uh, things ok. So, as a homework you can go and google these things also the older ones also bio waste and e waste and plastic waste and all and just make just at least the Wikipedia page first paragraph go and check of all these rules that will be sufficient for a prelims question I am telling ok. So, because prelims is nearing you have to focus it that way. So, my intention is to give you all the topics which I feel is important ok. Now, next one goods trade barometer ok goods trade barometer is again a report or index you can tell is released by which body ok. So, UNIDO uh, then UNCTAD, OECD and WTO again all the four bodies are important for you ok and Vaishayas as I told in my test series there is a international body specific test series ok my students would be already got I think two of them you would have got as per schedule total four or five are there ok. So, 400 500 questions on bodies alone. Okay, meaning each of these body, one question will be there. Question, statement, explanation, answer, full detail. Okay, so this is like a lifetime notes also for you. If you enroll once also, in future also it will be required. WTO you have to study for the next 100 years, no matter how many years UPSC is going to conduct exam. WTO you have to study, UNCTAD you have to study. So, if you have not done, please do it from whichever source you have, if you have not enrolled to ICIS. Okay, so here this trade, trade you know, it will be obviously either it can be option B or option D. Okay, both are trade related bodies. So, here the answer is the main body only that is the WTO. Okay. So, WTO has lot of reports that also I will give you a revision chart very soon my students will get it where each chart will have every body and their reports. Okay, we have made it then. So, here previously known as world trade outlook indicator. Okay, it is the world's leading composite indicator that highlights the turning points in the global merchandise trade. Merchandise means the goods trade. Okay, we have goods trade also, we have services trade also. Services means the other tourism, hospitals, IT, call center, these are all services. Okay, but the other goods means you are actually importing, exporting some goods like mobile phones or toys or anything. So, that uh, 
kind of indicator that trade indicator is this one okay goods trade barometer by the wto it will give real time data and then it's like quarterly okay it's not like annually not quarterly quarterly means how much it will be uh, three months okay three months is quarterly so uh, like that will keep coming so that latest report came and in 2022 23 and all they told the trade will be declining and such things will be there but again it is uh, coming back on track but due to uh, the wars happening okay uh, Ar uh, armenia azerbaijan is fighting israel uh, gaza is fighting russia ukraine is fighting so obviously trade will go up and down and that related again more questions are there today and you will uh, uh, learn more okay I am doing more questions now in one episode because students gave the feedback in the first episode. Okay, you can go and check the comment section. Many people told like uh, uh, do at least 10 questions, do at least 15 questions, uh, do for at least a 20 minutes, 30 minutes, do not do 10 minute episode. So like that, that is why I am doing, trying to do little more. Okay, so next one, Indian Council of Historical Research comes under which ministry? Okay, so the name when you see this, you will feel like Indian Council of Historical Research means it can be cultural ministry or research means it can be science and technology ministry. Okay, or maybe it is like teaching you something which is education ministry or none of these. Okay, anything can happen. This this kind of things very rarely UPSC ask. Okay, like A, B, C, D question where ministry is asked. Else it will be a two statement type question and one of the statement will be the ministry. Okay, tribal ministry related bodies they have already asked. Uh, this uh, water, I told you, water related uh, bodies they have already asked. So, like this, this type is expected. Okay, and this body keeps coming in the news also. Now this history related, archaeology related, you know, Ram Mandir, archaeology, this uh, uh, Babri Masjid, many, many temples and these things are in news. So historical body or cultural bodies are important this year. Okay, so here the answer is education ministry. Okay, so it was made in like, uh, it's not a new body, 1972 by the Ministry of Education's order, it was uh, uh, made. And uh, uh, here, uh, if you see, uh, they are established under not any company act or something that body is established under society registration act of 1860 okay like a society itself charitable society work it will be doing they publish a lot of papers and all so if you see uh, indian historical review that is in english they publish that and in hindi it is called itihas they publish this uh, uh, journals kind of thing it is uh, not like funded by anyone it is a self supporting organization receive funding from this uh, ugc and then it is based in new delhi and uh, Bangalore and uh, Guwahati, Assam also they have the body. So, this is like pure GK it is, but still in case a statement comes, you should at least know it is under education ministry and it is like a society. Okay, that is the basic for prelims takeaway I am telling you. And the news if you see, with ISRO, they have signed an MOU, MOU means Memorandum of Understanding. They are launching a project called History of the Indian Science and Technology. Okay, so the science also evolved over the years. So, that has a history. Okay, the science growth, the ISRO's growth, that has a history. Okay, at least now when we are like Chandrayaan uh, 3, where uh, the first, uh, uh, this thing, okay, the first time we are, uh, uh, first country to reach the South Pole of the Moon. So, that is a very big achievement. So, our history and all, people will be interested to read. People will be like, if we uh, put it like a documentary or a video or something people will watch okay and india is being marketed in that way only after this government has come the branding which india has got it is like not comparable to any other previous uh, uh, regimes okay the, the way these people market india is like a you can tell a tourism product or india as a, a global uh, village like that they are marketing it everywhere anywhere you go okay even if london any exhibition is happening or usa anything is happening the way they project india has changed now so that in as part of that indian bodies are coming together and making these kind of uh, historical projects okay so now again little more you can pause and see and the news link is also there in my uh, test series students there you will see whatever extra thing they are doing okay like 1.5 crore project it is they are collaborating six volumes and astronomy astrology mathematics all these will be there so these are the basic things which they are trying to uh, cover in that project okay now next question this uh, pele's hair or pele's tears are terms used in context of which geographical phenomenon okay Last year, you saw questions on cyclone, on uh, monsoons, on uh, this uh, earthquakes. Two questions came. All were answerable from NCRT itself. NCRT geography class 11th uh, answers were directly there. And uh, those questions also there in our test series, it was there. So, here they are asking which geographical phenomenon. Okay. Glacial melting, cloud burst, river dry ups or volcanic eruptions. Okay. So, volcano related questions are like very less. But this year and last year, a lot of volcanic eruptions had happened across the globe. Okay, earthquakes also happened, but an earthquake question already came. So, this year immediately I do not think they will repeat it. So, this answer is actually uh, volcanic eruptions. Okay, and this also not in India and all. Uh, India, what is the volcano? That also tried to find out. Question has already come. India is the only one active volcano is there. That uh, uh, it is not active, but uh, that one volcano is there. That is the question which came. Okay, so as part of this one term you have to study, you would have heard fog or smog and all, but there is one more term called vog. Okay. VOG that is the volcanic dust or volcano whatever comes out that and the gases that mixed they are calling it like a VOG okay so this 
keeps happening in those areas where a lot of volcanoes are there in Iceland and all back to back uh, volcanoes are erupting and uh, the tourism is getting affected that was one news this year. So Hawaiian island if you know it is the left side of USA you can see here it will be uh, just above the tropic of uh, cancer I think it will be uh, somewhere here so just above the tropic of cancer it will be so and below USA so that Hawaiian islands have lot of uh, volcanoes okay Mauna Lea, Mauna Kao, Mauna like that M A U N A and uh, some other keyword will be there so that, that kind of lot of volcanoes are there and they are erupting. And there, when they are erupting, this uh, along with this all dust and like glass kind of particles are also coming. So that glass kind of particles only they are calling as this Pele's hair or Pele's tears. So, tears, okay. This Pele is, I think, some god name or god related name. Okay, like Europeans are all name most of the things related to their god names. Okay. So here also, uh, I'll show you somewhere here it will be written. Okay, uh, the goddess of volcanoes. Okay, Hawaiian goddess of volcanoes. Uh, the, the glass particles which is coming out out of these uh, gaps or fissures okay fissure is the gaps of this uh, volcanoes and this thing and all uh, which is again technically it's vog so vog can cause burning eyes headaches sore throat asthma these kind of things so this is in a, uh, a term they have given as Pele's tears and article uh, Pele's tears and uh, Pele's hair and this came in uh, the newspapers okay in a separate column it was there that is why we made this MCQ okay so this geography as a uh, revision if you are doing volcanoes and tsunamis try to revise okay other than what you do ncrt's volcanoes and tsunamis because on that topic questions have not come in many years so that is the reason i am telling maybe they'll ask okay ideally they should ask because this is part of your syllabus they should ask so volcano related something they can ask you because an ncrt information is not good enough okay so you have to revise more now next uh, current affair again ikshak launched recently in india okay relates to what so ikshak Seeing the name, uh, you could like maybe ISRO some project, DRDO some project, Indian Navy would have built something or our supercomputer name it can be, any, anything it can be okay. This way current affairs are very very important like this hundreds of thousands of term you will study each year and uh, if UPSC ask you it will become tough for you okay. So uh, in other exams also it will come, uh, not only UPSC. So Ikshak is actually, uh, this is 2022 news okay, 2023 there is one more update, the Sanshodak okay. So these are all warships of Indian Navy okay so this is the fourth one I think four only they were planning in that project and in that project uh, the fourth one is Sanshodak which is now in June or July 2023 this uh, came out and the other one was November 2022 Ikshak so answer is Indian Navy Indian Navy uh, is what uh, relates uh, to Ikshak and the other names okay somewhere here yeah Sandhyak and uh, Nirdeshak Ikshak and the other one Sanshodak which I showed you okay Sanshodak is I think uh, some meaning is there messenger or receiver or some, some meaning is there for that term so uh, uh, these uh, are the ships or warships which India is building okay the, the project uh, uh, which uh, it's like I think 2300 uh, crore is, is it's a very big project okay many people don't know about this they only know this highlight of news like uh, 3000 crore statue 5000 crore temple they're not seeing like for education for health for medical for defense and all even more lakhs of crores of rupees are being spent okay the infrastructure especially the bridges and all even yesterday Gujarat one very big sea bridge was in, uh, inaugurated these are all thousands of lakhs of crores are being spent every month or every year but people are only like misguided by the things like this religion wise or other unwanted things which is political okay so you should know that india's development or everything is at the highest now okay you as, as at least an aspirant who will be going to make policies for the country you should know that many such things are also happening don't fall into politics and just tell like money is going all in unwanted things many many good money that to too much money compared to your temples and these things are going uh, in the right uh, cause okay which actually people actually want to see okay whether it's hospitals or railways or infrastructure anything okay so here uh, Okay, these are extra technical terms like how much speed it is, how much this and that and all UPSC won't ask you. I just gave you as a uh, notes uh, uh, format. Okay, so this if you see Financial Express, at least 11 newspapers, okay, at least 11 newspapers I am covering including PIB, PRS, Down to Earth magazine and then we have the Hindu, Indian Express, uh, the print media, then uh, this one and uh, many many more okay, economic times okay, times of india all these pe news articles which comes online i am going through and from there only we are making mcqs okay for the current affair uh, thing i am telling so again uh, when they are doing this uh, uh, launch and all they will uh, uh, chant something from the atharva veda and all so this uh, upsc used to ask this kind of question like uh, satyameva jayate is taken from where gayatri mantra is taken from where so these are all from different different vedas and upanishads only so that also used to come okay in the 90s and all the upsc prelims question used to be that level so that also have a little bit idea okay when you do ancient history and all you will get to know okay already our playlist uh, link if you did not get come and ask me in whatsapp there is a playlist for history revision okay free revision history mini series uh, playlist it is where uh, every chapter like uh, buddhism jainism uh, the vedas 
uh, Mauryan uh, or uh, Ashoka, like that. We have given Guptas. We have different different uh, videos where everything in prelims oriented. We have designed it. Okay, it's completely free. You can come and ask. Okay, everything is printed in my PDF, also test PDF. But video format, if you want, which Ma'am has done uh, last year, I think prelims time she made it. I will give you. Okay, come and ask in uh, WhatsApp. So the next question: What is the new name suggested by World Health Organization for the monkeypox recently? Okay. Because now everybody were thinking only this uh, corona, dengue, and mosquito disease and all. This disease is something which every exams have actually ignored. Okay, but question can come on monkeypox because this time the uh, terminology change happened. Okay, the name now it's not monkeypox. Okay, because now there is this thing like everybody, even even monkeys you cannot insult and all. Everything political correctness you are checking. Okay, can you put a man's name there or a woman's name there or a, if will they get hurt? So like, like the monkey's name also you should not use in a disease. Okay, because monkey's name also you should not spoil in, uh, in this kind of thing. That's the idea okay tomorrow somebody will tell lady's finger should not be called lady's finger okay that level uh, the things are going so here m pox brown pox naples plague antonin plague okay so these are all in the news in different different countries uh, these uh, diseases and all but what is the name okay for monkey pox which they have done so as of now they couldn't find out a proper name they have named it m pox only okay so m pox is the answer here and the intention, as I told, is not to uh, tell you this name. This is in SSE exam they ask you, but you should know that WTO is the sorry WHO is the one who uh, changes this thing. And about monkeypox, a little bit information you should know. Okay, it was named in 1970, more than 10 years after the virus uh, caused the disease. In uh, meaning, in the monkeys, it was found. Okay, monkeys is not causing it, but monkeys it was found. So you started calling it uh, monkeypox. Okay, so it did not originate in monkeys. And the origin is properly not known, okay? Because other many diseases are there where you actually know how it started, where it started, exactly everything you know. But here it was a little uh, like it's not up to date, okay? The information. So the name uh, disease, uh, name of the disease given before the WHO published the best practices for naming disease in 2015. Meaning there is a best practices guidelines which WHO has published, but in 2015 only that guidelines came. Before that itself they called it monkeypox. So as per the new guidelines, you should not keep a name which is having a person's name or animal name or such names you should not keep. Okay, that is the reason. So here again, it is like uh, spreading and these things and all and uh, name change was suggested and currently both monkeypox and mpox are used simultaneously but uh, WHO has asked uh, people to uh, start using it as uh, mpox. Okay, so again uh, this renaming process and guidelines and all I think in one of my chart it's there. I will try to show it in uh, some other uh, when we do some other disease related thing, I will show you that. Okay. So, International Committee on uh, Taxonomy of Viruses set up in 1966 is responsible uh, for uh, authorizing and organizing this uh, thing, okay, this naming convention. They are the ones responsible, okay. And uh, previously known as International Committee on Nomenclature of Viruses. So, the members of all the, uh, this uh, group is all expert virologists and they are the ones who will uh, give some technical name for uh, diseases, okay. You are seeing uh, like different different namings, like Corona also variant has different different naming. It will not be any person's name or anything, okay. That is why when we heard like Chinese virus and all, that was not allowed, okay. You should not call Chinese virus or Wuhan virus and all. You should have a separate name. So, COVID-19 or Omicron or Delta, Alpha, like that they started naming uh, different things, okay. So one or two more questions we will do for today's episode. So this uh, uh, Eclofinac, okay, Eclo or Aceclofinac, whatever is the pronunciation, that is in news related to what? And they have given food preservatives, fruit ripening substances, painkillers, toiletries. So same like this, I have taken these options from the 2022 question only. If you see triclosan considered harmful when exposed to high levels for a long time is most likely present in which of the following? Okay, so that same four options I have put in this question to ask this thing to you okay because this term was con constantly in the news okay so this uh, eclofenac you would have heard diclofenac term which upsc already asked few years back that was uh, related to uh, vultures uh, uh, kind of thing okay vultures uh, exist uh, uh, extinction okay many vultures is having that and toxic and they are dying so this is actually the same thing only instead of diclofenac they were starting to use this uh, eclofenac thing so it's a painkiller it is given to animals and all so, it's a veterinary painkiller, uh, we give to uh, cattle, we give to uh, such pet uh, animals and all. And uh, the vulture, there is a plan, vulture action plan, 2022-2025. They are telling this is toxic, okay, meaning when the cattle die uh, and all, who will come and feed on it, the vulture. And these vultures are also dying because in the cattle's body, this painkiller drug is there, which is actually very toxic for these birds and the birds are dying, okay. So, that is the reason uh, the Drug Controller General of India is telling ban this itself. 
veterinary use itself should be banned and uh, like other drugs also names are given okay which is not important the ketoprofen and all so they are given uh, these names so 2018 petition was passed and then you should prohibit this and it is pending in the delhi high court and uh, even all these bodies wildlife institute of india bombay natural historical society ivri which is vulture uh, research and all these bodies have told that uh, you have to ban this harmful drug okay these bodies also try to just google and always google and read the wikipedia's first paragraph alone okay don't do too many research anywhere else that will be sufficient they will give you where, when it was started whether any ministry is involved whether they get funding from somewhere that is the only thing about a body you have to study okay so till date uh, no action has been taken everything is staying pending and now the ivri indian veterinary research institute demanded the ban of using this uh, after this again showed that uh, animals are getting affected and uh, this one see this aclofenac converted to diclofenac after it was injected into water buffaloes similar to the results in domestic okay meaning that is getting converted into this harmful one and that is why uh, in the test which they got in the blood sample test and plasma test and all they found that it is harmful and so it is being demanded to be banned so if you see this i have taken from down to earth magazine so like this down to earth has very very uh, interesting uh, articles which is helpful for environment geography and science which i will not recommend you to read it because every month bulky bulky uh, content will come but I will look through important things and in my test series somewhere one one question will be there on most important topics. Okay. And these topics are actually coming in newspapers also. Don't think only in the uh, magazine. Okay. Now one more very important topic which uh, last year question was expected. But last year they asked in a different way. They asked Black Sea alone. Okay. Black Sea is uh, bordering countries. So Black Sea grain initiative seen in news relates to what? desalination plant illegal sand mining food grain export or none of these okay so it's very easy question because the name itself has black sea grain initiative it is a food a food grain okay you should know this ukraine uh, and russia and all they have like huge uh, uh, you can tell uh, the food basket of the world kind of areas it is like exporting of wheat rice and all. many things they are kind of number one okay so there when war is happening obviously the exports will get affected the black sea and all will be blockaded the russian ships will be there so nothing will come out of those areas then many other countries who are dependent on the uh, uh, this uh, crops uh, food grains from them will get affected okay that is why this initiative which was i think brokered by turkey and all who came in center and un united nations they told black sea grain initiative that is the grains should continue to go to everyone okay so that is the initiative but problem is russia will sign one day then russia will come out of it then russia will again sign it so it's coming going coming going so entire world is getting affected okay that is why this was very very important and even now it is very important okay even now i don't think russia is properly supporting it so as part of your prelims what all you have to study the bordering countries you have to study that is this uh, turkey ukraine russia georgia uh, bulgaria and uh, romania okay six countries are there i'll show you more okay today one more question is there i remember where four seas like this black sea adriatic sea mediterranean sea everything's border country i'll teach you as a homework what you do is this agent sea okay agent sea what are the bordering countries tell me in comment section okay if you have seen the video till now you are a very very serious aspirant okay because most of the students i know they skip videos okay they'll just see the question answer and then they just go they don't listen to explanations they are very overconfident that uh, whatever the slide this and i already know my coaching has taught me already such people ideally won't clear because you are if you believe in that magazine then do only that you should not watch this video at all okay you are coming here to just see okay anything question question is there but the explanation what the teacher is telling what are the extra points i am telling that and all you don't hear or you are seeing it on mute i don't know such people will not clear the exam i'm not telling because you're skipping vice's video i'm telling because you are looking two three sources at parallel that will never work okay one person's thing follow entire time you have a very high chance to pass okay if that teacher is good teacher okay if they're teaching correctly well simply there are hundreds of youtubers who are actually scamming students by teaching which never comes in exam okay many people i have seen they take cds question papers and all tell like this is the previous year upsc uh, civil service question okay cds capf i have seen i myself have went and commented under many youtube channels like stop scamming students okay because students themselves won't look the question paper they believe these teachers blindly and think that actually it came in upsc civil service and they get scammed okay because that question never came in upsc civil service that topic will never come that topic was asked in cds exams or capf exams okay at least if they tell that okay it is cds exam and we expect to come in civil service that is fine but they are blindly lying that these are all upsc civil service questions which is which it is not okay so here what was the question which came 2019 they gave you this uh, uh, five c's okay adriatic sea black sea caspian sea mediterranean sea and red sea and they asked one one country and telling whether they are a bordering country or not all of these seas have at least six or above okay so mediterranean i think 21 countries bordering mediterranean sea so upsc here what they did is they did not want you to study all this okay coaching class told that okay you should have studied mediterranean sea red sea no 
they expected you to study Black Sea and Caspian Sea, which was back to back in the news. Here only Black Sea was required. Black Sea, Croatia, which is given, is actually wrong. Okay, I showed you the map now. Here it's written also Bulgaria, Romania, Georgia, Turkey, and uh, uh, one more will be there. Okay, Ukraine. Okay, so G R R B O T. This one. This is the trick. G R R B O T. So here there is no Croatia. If you know at least that, okay, two is wrong. Two is wrong means what? This is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. So answer you got. Without reading Adri Adriatic Sea, uh, sorry, Adriatic Sea, Caspian Sea, Mediterranean Sea, Red Sea, you got the answer. And this is what UPSC was testing. But this mini coaching don't teach you that the elimination is still there. UPSC sets the question that way that the serious aspirant who studied Black Sea and came, they should be able to solve it. That is their intention. They don't want you to mug up these many GK fact. Okay, but the relevant GK you have to study. So here, because now next year, now once the question comes, then the wrong options becomes important. Okay, this I told you in my foundation also. Now Adriatic Sea, Mediterranean and Red Sea becomes important because once they come printed in the question paper, that means they have done the research of what are the bordering countries of this also. So they expect you to study that. Okay, but that agency and all, it is not there, but still as a homework, I have told you to do it. Now here, Caspian Sea, which also was asked by UPSC, your trick is this only, A trick. Okay, A T R I K. So, Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan, Russia, Iran and Kazakhstan. So, here if you see, Kazakhstan is correct. Okay, here 3 is correct. Okay, 1, 3, 4 we told, 1, 3, 4. Adriatic Sea is Albania and 4 is this thing. Okay, and Syria is not part of Red Sea. So, that I will show you now. Extra information. Okay, Mediterranean Sea, there are 21 countries. Okay, sometime back I told you APEC also, I think it was uh, 21 countries. So, this one 21 countries and uh, this one is like very difficult to make a trick. Okay, this many countries are there. So, you make whatever trick you want. First, I will tell you the smaller ones. Okay, Adriatic Sea is only 6 countries. So, that you can make like either this M basic or this C Simba. Okay, so that if you see Croatia, Italy, uh, Slovenia, Montenegro, Bosnia, Herzegovina, that is one country. Okay, then Albania. So, that one if you study as C Simba, that C Simba, you can use it here in the Mediterranean Sea because that 6 is a sub of this also, meaning whatever is bordering Adriatic, that is bordering this also. So, C Simba plus, then the similar letters I have simply grouped. Okay, this is not a trick which I recommend you to study, but I just for easiness. Okay, SS, TT, LL, MM, meaning all those letters, two, two countries are there. And if whatever European country comes to your mind, write that. Okay, in that side above Africa, whatever countries of Europe you know, write it, it will get filled. Okay, then EFG. AI and CM extra is because C and M, Cyprus and Malta are not part of that Europe mainland. It is in the water itself. It is inside the Mediterranean Sea itself. It is island countries. Okay, Cyprus and Malta. So, that is why uh, that two extra I have given. Else, other than that, 19 countries are there. And AI will be, uh, you can take Albania and Italy or Algeria and Italy. So, whatever you know, remember the Africa's top countries and Europe's bottom countries and these two island countries, that all is the bordering of uh, Mediterranean Sea. Okay. Then Red Sea. So, Red Sea again there, this Babel Mandab Strait and many uh, things are there, other things. Countries, only six countries are there. So, that also that uh, uh, Saudi Arabia is the biggest country and you have uh, Yemen there, you have this side uh, Egypt uh, or uh, the uh, Sudan, uh, Eritrea, that kind of countries are there. So, that is the six countries, but Syria is not there. Okay. So, this trick if you want, this is D -E -D -E -E -S -S -E -Y. Okay. So, this is the uh, six countries of uh, Red Sea. So, now going to the next question. Okay. Sorry, the same question only. Uh, the answer uh, for uh, food grain export. So, Russia with Ukraine and Turkey. Okay, Russia with one second, Ukraine and Turkey and United Nations together have made this agreement for the safe passage of food grains uh, for export outside of Ukraine, okay, from Ukraine to uh, other countries in amidst this war only. So, under this agreement, uh, this uh, uh, grain, food, fertilizer, everything they are going to resume and uh, it is like humanitarian corridor they call, okay, safe maritime humanitarian. Uh, corridor and Ukraine some port names are also given that also you can uh, remember okay most famous one if you uh, know is that uh, Sevastopol okay I will show you here see Sevastopol is one of the most important this Odyssey is there okay Kerch is there Yalta is there so this is a basic uh, Ukraine ports uh, which you have to uh, know okay that is actually the Crimea area Crimea is also asked by UPSC ones which uh, Russia long back captured from uh, Ukraine. Uh, so, here if you see 2023 news, Turkish president met with the Russian president to revive the black grain seed deal and this is happening since like every three months this is happening. Okay, Russia is signing, Russia is not signing, agreed, not agreed. So, it is going on. So, that is the news. You have to know only that much. So, here see port of Sevastopol. So, this all is there in the newspaper, Indian Express newspaper. If anything comes in Indian Express or Hindu, that becomes like 90 percent important for your uh, UPSC uh, prelims. Okay. So, here uh, the cargo is going to high income countries like Spain, Netherlands, Korea, Germany, Ireland. Everybody is dependent. Okay. India also receives 4 percentage of the wheat export from uh, Ukraine. So, Ukraine is the among the largest exporter of wheat, maize, rapeseed, uh, sunflower seeds, sunflower oil, everything very, very important. Okay. So, now, 
one more question we'll do and we'll close this uh, today's episode okay uh, gk yota d1 yota d1 cna news relates to what gene editing defense data centers or elections so here answer is actually uh, data center okay like we have many things now like cyber security and things and all that data of india should be stored in india only so we are making data centers okay which other countries already have many data centers we already made one in uh, uh, hyderabad i think in 2008 that was the first data center in northeast also we announced uh, guwahati assam we are making one now the north india's uh, first has come uh, that is yota d1 i think in uttar pradesh and uh, th that is the biggest in india also as of now okay so that is the uh, reason it was in news okay the biggest and the north india's first uh, hyperscale data center which they call in greater noida uh, up it has formed the first one was in hyderabad in 2008 then uh, northeast region in 2021 they announced it and like then remaining are like how what is the square feet of the building and what is the power and all that is not important okay 7000 crore this is what i'm telling there are a lot of money pumped into many other technological infrastructure things and all but this doesn't come in your whatsapp and instagram and news and all so you are not knowing how many thousands of lakhs of crores are being spent on uh, the things which you actually tell like under this uh, temple videos and all you tell instead of this build hospitals instead of this build infrastructure it's not like instead of this yeah, india can like country okay we need culture also we need development also so both places money will be invested but you have to know that in this culture and temple it's very small amount actually being going compared to what we are spending on the other things but that you are not seeing in social media that's why you are not knowing it okay so try to learn these kind of things also now i will do the next questions in the next episode because i think uh, this today we have discussed at least 15 plus questions we have discussed with topics and each question itself is like a sub topic okay like in one question itself you studied maternity and that see this five topics in one okay so like that may, one question itself is five topics so total at least 20 to 30 topics you would have studied today and if this is helping i want you to like tell like i am watching this video or uh, present sir or thank you or whatever in comment section your attendance should be there okay only then we'll know like how we have to increase the speed or increase something or tell some other uh, any anything any feedback you give here good or bad we'll know how to take it forward okay so about the other things okay whether it is goodies or whether it is test series or whether it is this 1250 emi please contact in whatsapp okay because if you are not on my whatsapp i cannot inform you many of the things okay comments and all i will read but again there everything cannot be copy pasted link can all cannot be given there that's not in whatsapp only i can give so whatsapp number is there on screen uh 7200681675 there this uh, whether it's 2025 batch get this offer i recommend you if you are a serious aspirant march when the time table is starting other people can uh, keep watching these things or any source you have continue revising over okay, 3 months is very very crucial for your uh, preparation so i'll wind up this video thank you wait for the next part thank you and have a nice day